Hey guys, it's Anne. I'm over at Plant Obsessed. And I don't know if I have a cricket in my basement or a tree frog. You guys hear it? What you think? I don't see anything, which makes me think cricket. But the part of me that really hates crickets, I hope it's a frog. All right, put your comments below. Anyway, today we are going to look in on blue, if you have not already guessed. So let me get you set up, and we will have a look and see what he's doing. Okay, so here is the mostly finished end, and uh, I'm not sure who had talked about this the most recently, but I know that uh, Emily, the crazy worm lady, had uh, hypothesized that the worms will push up things that they don't find to be usable uh, for food. So. What's really interesting is that there are little bits of plastic from windows from long ago when I used to not pay attention to the windows and the plastic. And if I leave it out long enough and let it dry, I often will find these undesirable things out on the top. Interesting, huh? All right, enough of that. Let's look and see what's going on here. Looks like I could maybe uh, even start sifting this pretty soon. Starts looking pretty good, doesn't it? Definitely will have to say that the worms are not moving out, though. Definitely still lots of worm action here. Um, just like uh, maybe it had been fed although I did not feed at this end last time. I only fed at the active end, thinking that the worms would get up and go. But they are not. <laughs> so I'm just going to dig in here just a little bit to see how the moisture is doing down deep. It's getting a little bit drier on top. Is it getting, you know, drier on bottom? And, at this moment, I'm saying no, it's not. Um, but we'll keep it fluffed. Let's take a look in on my Florida avocados and see if they are germinating. Yes, they are. Good worms growing me avocados. Here's one that does not appear to be going to grow. So. You win some, you lose some. I don't need that many avocado trees, and I think the worms are like, oh, I think we can eat this one. Because, you know, they sit down here and they think, oh, what should we do? She's not here to tell us what to do. Um, not really, but uh, that's, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. All right, let me flip you around to the leading edge, and we'll see what's been going on there. All right, so here we are on the leading edge, and I'm finding more windows, so I'm going to take this opportunity to pick them out. I'm going to assume that the worms made the decision that the windows from the old envelopes had to go and that they said, hey, you know, she's going to notice these sparkly clear things. We should probably put them up where she can see them. She's not got really great eyesight anymore. Good job, worms. All right, let's see. I'm not remembering exactly where I fed, if it's going to be farther down, but I think this is the middle, what I was calling the middle section last time, which is um, still you can see the bedding, um, but not really any food, just old mango, you know, pits and stuff, but no, no real, real food. Some sprouts. Alright, 
So let's move you a little closer to the leading edge. Okay. Let's see if we can find a worm ball. Oh, well, maybe. I'm not sure where it's going to start. Or where it's going to end, for that matter. Hmm. Lots of worms. So that's nice. Clumpy paper. That's not nice. Let's keep moving things over. Okay, there we go. Nice, big, squishy worm ball right there. So that's good. Got a little bit of... Um, Melon, maybe? Um, it's been more than a week, but not two weeks, I think. So still enough room for us to be seeing a bit of a worm ball, but nothing like we did last time, which was nice. But you can't expect that all the time. So let's flip things around, make sure you get the air in there. mango tree. Are we sure we are sure worms? You guys want that many mango trees for roommates? Okay, so just really huge density of worms here. One really big worm there. Oh, and uh, as can be counted on the avocado shell. And I don't do this. They do this on their own. So, looks like a really good concentration of worms and, and all of that. So, I think I can uh, set this up here and move uh, a little farther down and give them their next feeding. Break up this... Uh, paper that's being a little clumpy. Yeah, it's not ideal. Alright, so we've made that level with the rest of it, so let's move down to the new feeding zone. Alright, get them a little bedding there. Put the old sticks and corn stobs in there. And then I've got some bananas and bread and melon stuff for them to eat. Tea bags, looks like an orange. People have asked about the staples on the tea bag. I don't mess with it, and I don't ever seem to notice it. So, I don't know if the worms are eating staples or what. Okay, make sure I get all the worms in there. Um, and for those of you who are, are new, uh, the bedding does have grit in it and coconut core, shredded boxes, shredded paper, and um, I usually give them a good amount of that so that everything can get going. I'm going to give this really new bedding a little bit of the castings from the other side because it's pretty new new. I haven't, it's not been sitting for a while. Normally I like to age the bedding for a couple of weeks. It's only a couple days old. Hopefully that will help the worms get involved in it. Now if you have any questions about the wedge method or blue, put that in the comments below. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, feel free to put them also below. Alright guys, well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, I would love for you to be my worm family. Click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.